Hey, Vintage Kids. I hope you all have been doing so well. It's been quite some time since I have been able to talk to you and share the lesson, but I'm really excited that I get to do it again. Uh, I hope that y'all are having a good winter and that you're staying nice and cozy with your families. Um, so we have been in the book of Job, and we've been thinking about the word hope and what that word means for us. Um, so many of us hope for something to happen or we hope for a specific outcome. People sometimes use the word hope when they are talking about a wish. I hope my team wins the baseball game. I hope we have cookies after dinner. But the Bible talks about hope differently. Hope is the biblical explanation of what God has promised. We hope for something that we know will happen because God has promised that it's going to happen. Remember, we are spending time over the next few weeks in the book of Job. So Job was a man who was called righteous. He was a good guy. He hadn't done anything wrong, but something really hard, some th- sorry, but some really hard things started to happen to Job. Um, does anybody remember what happened to Job last week? So if you remember, he lost all of his animals, his servants, and he lost his family. A few weeks ago, we learned about how Satan thought Job did the right thing because God made him a wealthy person and that he made him things easier for him. Um, and so we learned last week that Job's hope in God was not based on him having an easy life, but instead that he had hoped, placed his hope in God because of who God is. So that reminds me of our catechism question. Our question asks, what is our only hope in life and death? The answer is that we are not our own, but belong to God. So as we continue to learn about Job, we will see if this is really true. Is our life ours or is it God's? And what does this even mean? So let's take a look at Job 3, 25 through 26 where Job said, instead of bread, I get grains for my supper. Then leave the table and cry out in sadness. The worst of my fears have come true. What I've dreaded most has happened. I am shattered, my peace destroyed. No rest for me ever. Death has invaded life. So let's chat. First of all, what's happening here? What stands out to you? Is this a happy passage or a sad passage? So Job has been through so much. He's lost everything, including his family. He's lost everything on earth that was important to him. And here he is taking time to feel. How does he feel? Read the passage again if you need to. Talk about how Job feels sad and how he talks about how he feels sad. He is shattered. His peace is destroyed. This feeling sad and talking about feeling sad is called lament. I know that's a big word. It's called lament. As Christians, we often feel like we have to be perfect and smiley all the time, but this just isn't true. Hard things happen, and we are allowed to feel the weight of those very sad things. Job feels sad, and he talks about how sad he is because he is sad. He has had a lot of really, really hard things happen to him. So what does Job not do in his sadness and lament? Job still isn't blaming God. He may be expressing his sadness and his anger and frustration to God, 
but he isn't blaming God for all the bad things that happen. Here, he is placing his hope in God despite all the awful things that have happened to him. As you go throughout your week, if you think about the hard things that happen to you or the sad things that happen to you, know that you can feel really sad and really upset about them and that you can go to God with them without blaming him for the bad things that have happened. I hope you all have a wonderful week and that this has been a good reminder that when you have a hard time, you can be sad about it and then that you can talk about it as well. But at the end of the day, our hope is in Christ. Y'all have a great week. Hey, Vintage Kids, it's me, Mr. Tyler. Um, I wanted to teach you guys a new song. It's a song that, uh, that I wrote and that, that no one's ever heard before. You're the first one to hear it. You, right there, you. It's pretty exciting. So in this next series that you're about to go through, uh, it's, it's going to be in Hebrews. Um, there's a verse that's going to be really important to that, to that time. And you're going to learn about it in, in, in your Sunday school and uh, in your kids' time every Sunday. Um, it's Hebrews 10.23. And so you're going to memorize it. And I wanted to make it a little bit easier to memorize. So I came up with this little song to help you do that. So I hope you'll, uh, I hope you'll learn it. I hope you'll uh, sing this until your parents uh, can't stand it anymore, but they can't tell you to stop singing scripture. So uh, there's nothing they can do about it. So sing it, love it. Let's worship together right now.